Welcome to Iceland. We're so excited to have you join us on this adventure. Today, we'll give you a brief overview of our itinerary so you can start getting excited about all the amazing things we'll be seeing and doing. This summary video will give you a quick overview of the places we visited. It will offer a sneak peek at the breathtaking landscapes, vibrant cities, and remarkable attractions we encountered. We will be posting more detailed content about each of these destinations in the future. In the upcoming episodes, we will explore each location in more detail, uncovering their unique characteristics, hidden gems, and fascinating stories. From the cascading waterfalls to the mystical glaciers, from the charming villages to the awe-inspiring geothermal areas, we will bring you closer to the heart of Iceland. So get ready to immerse yourself in the beauty of this amazing country. Sit back, relax, and embark on this virtual adventure with us. My week-long trip to Iceland was an exciting adventure that focused on the southern part of the island. I had the opportunity to explore this land of stunning landscapes and impressive contrasts with my youngest son. I arrived in Reykjavik on a Saturday in June, a day before my son. This is because there were availability issues and we departed from different cities. I flew from Lisbon, while he flew from London. As I stepped off the plane, I was greeted by a cool, refreshing breeze. I took a deep breath and smiled, knowing that I was about to start an incredible journey. The airport, located approximately 50 kilometers from the capital, is surrounded by vast stretches of volcanic terrain and the Atlantic Ocean. To explore Iceland at my own pace, I rented a car from Blue Car Rental. After a quick and easy check-in process, I drove towards Reykjavik, where I would spend the first night of my trip. I arrived around 6 p.m., which gave me plenty of time to explore the city center. The sun doesn't set until after 11 p.m. at this time of year, so I was able to see many of the city's most famous landmarks. I first visited the Icelandic Parliament, which is a beautiful building located in the heart of the city. From there, I walked down Rainbow Street to Hallgrimskirkja Basilica. Hallgrimskirkja is a Lutheran church whose construction was inspired by the magma of volcanic eruptions and the endless columns of basalt scattered throughout the island. The views from the top are incredible. Be sure to take the elevator to the top and enjoy the panoramic view of the city. I then made my way to Laugavegur Street, which is a lively shopping and dining area. There are many information points along the street where you can get information about the city's attractions. My last stop was the Harpa Concert Hall and Conference Center. The building is a work of art, and it's free to enter. Visitors can also enjoy a meal at the restaurant inside. During the dark Icelandic nights, these windows become the stage for projections of northern lights or other effects. After a fulfilling first day, I retired for the night. As the following day, I still had the morning to conclude my visit to the city. I had to pick up my son at 2.30 p.m., so there was plenty of time to make the most of it. Let's begin our second day of travel. After a restful night at Kastali Guest House, located in the heart of Reykjavik, I set out to explore more of this interesting and cool city. I want to mention that I will provide links to the accommodations we stayed at during this trip in the description. Just behind the guest house lies Chornin Lake, a small urban lake inhabited by over 40 different bird species, including ducks, swans, and geese. Along the shores of Chornin Lake, several tourist attractions of the capital can be found, including the Icelandic Parliament, Reykjavik City Hall, the Free Church of Reykjavik, and the National Gallery of Iceland, one of Reykjavik's most famous museums. Next, I strolled through the Old Harbor, a great way to spend the morning or afternoon, exploring shops, cafes, and museums that offer insights into Icelandic history and culture, along with the opportunity to sample some of the best Icelandic culinary delights. On my way back to the car, I passed by Landakotskirkja, the Basilica of Christ the King. Unfortunately, I couldn't enter as they were rehearsing a concert. The architecture of the basilica is influenced by the Gothic Revival style, characterized by its tall spire and intricate details, such as pointed arches and decorative elements. One thing I was warned about was not to leave Reykjavik without visiting Grata Lighthouse. It is a beautiful spot in Reykjavik that is often overlooked. Here are some images from that walk.
back in the car, it's time to pick up Joao at Keflavik Airport. After a heartfelt reunion, we immediately set out to explore the points we had planned to visit on the Reykjans Peninsula. Our itinerary for the rest of the day was as follows. First, visit the bridge between continents, then head to Gunnivar Hot Springs, climb up Reykjans Lighthouse, enjoy the views at Valanukamol Ocean Viewpoint, visit the Blue Lagoon, and end the day with a warm food at Café Bryggjan in Grindavik. Let me provide a brief introduction to each of these places. The bridge between continents is a unique landmark in Iceland, symbolizing the meeting point of the Eurasian and North American tectonic plates. Spanning the Almanadja fissure in the Reykjans Peninsula, this bridge allows visitors to walk between two continents and witness the incredible geological forces at play. Gunnivar Hot Springs is a geothermal area named after a legendary ghost called Gunna, whose presence is said to haunt the area. This geothermal field features boiling mud pools, hissing steam vents, and vibrant mineral deposits, creating a surreal and otherworldly atmosphere. Reykjane's Lighthouse offers breathtaking panoramic views of the North Atlantic Ocean. This iconic lighthouse stands tall as a guiding beacon for ships navigating the treacherous coastal waters. Visitors can climb to the top of the lighthouse and admire the sweeping coastal vistas, capturing the beauty of Iceland's dramatic coastline. Valanukamol Ocean Viewpoint is a stunning viewpoint where one can take in awe-inspiring vistas of the vast Atlantic Ocean crashing against the rocky coastline. The panoramic views, coupled with the wild and untamed nature of the surroundings, make it a popular spot for nature enthusiasts and photographers alike. The Blue Lagoon is one of Iceland's most famous attractions and a must-visit destination for travelers seeking relaxation and rejuvenation. This geothermal spa is renowned for its milky blue waters, rich in minerals like silica and sulfur, known for their therapeutic properties. Visitors can soak in the warm, mineral-rich waters while surrounded by Iceland's volcanic landscapes, creating a unique and indulgent experience. Grindavik is a small coastal town where we took the opportunity to do some shopping for local products and dietary supplements, and enjoy a delicious lobster soup at Café Bryggjan. It's a cozy café that provides a warm and welcoming atmosphere, perfect for enjoying a comforting meal after a day of exploration. It was time to head to the Bitra Guest House, the place where we would spend the night. The journey was approximately an hour and a half long. As a general rule, they advised us to check in by 8 p.m., but with the incredibly long daylight hours, it was easy to lose track of time, and with the temptation to stop here and there, we often arrived at accommodations around 10 p.m. In such cases, I always recommend making a phone call, especially when dealing with more family-oriented lodgings. After having a comforting and energizing breakfast at Bitra Guest House, our journey continues as we embark on the Fascinate Golden Circle, a renowned tourist route that unveils three extraordinary natural wonders, Thingvellir National Park, the Geysir Geothermal Area, and Gullfoss Waterfall. Prepare to be amazed as we witness the breathtaking continental drift at Thingvellir, marvel at the captivating eruptions of geysers, and experience the sheer power of Gullfoss. Our journey to Thingvellir National Park takes approximately an hour, allowing us to soak in the scenic beauty of the surrounding villages and landscapes. Upon arrival, please note that there is a parking fee of 750 ISK per day, which we recommend paying upon the conclusion of our visit to avoid crowds at the payment machines during peak hours. However, there is no entrance fee to enter Thingvellir National Park. This park holds great significance as the heart of Iceland, as it was the site where the Icelandic parliament was established in 930 AD. It comes as no surprise that the proclamation of the Republic of Iceland in 1944 also took place here at Thingvellir. It is a truly symbolic location. Geologically speaking, this is one of the rare places on Earth where you can walk between the American and European continents. Thingvellir National Park is situated amidst the tectonic plates of North America and Eurasia, nestled in a valley surrounded by mountains and volcanic ranges. As you wander from the visitor center down into the valley or venture towards Oxararfoss Waterfall, you will literally find yourself walking within the rift. 
It's truly awe-inspiring to realize that the black stone cliffs that surround us are the edges of continental plates. Inside Thingvellir National Park, we encounter Oxararfoss Waterfall. It's a relatively easy walk from either the visitor center or a nearby parking lot. Although it possesses its own charm, it may not compare to some of the other waterfalls we will later explore, such as those on the majestic Skogafoss Waterfall Hike. Stay tuned for more. Still, within the park's perimeter, we also discover the church and the Prime Minister's summer residence. The current church building was erected in 1859, but according to sagas, a church has stood at Thingvellir since 1017. The Thingvaller Bear serves as the official summer residence of the Prime Minister. Designed by architect Gujon Samuelson and constructed for the Althingi Millennium Celebration in 1930, this building initially boasted three gables and a turf roof. One of the popular activities in Thingvellir National Park is snorkeling or diving in Silfra, located between the two continental plates. Due to the plate's movement, the space between them has become a river with crystal-clear, lava-filtered water flowing into Lake Thingvalavatn. Another intriguing feature, albeit with a dark history, is the Drekking Garhilur, or Drowning Pool. This site was once used for executions, specifically drowning women. During gatherings at the National Park, at least 18 women were sentenced to death by drowning, accused of bringing shame upon their families and society. The last woman met her fate here in 1739. Having explored the wonders of Thingvellir, we continue our itinerary to the Geysir Geothermal Area, approximately an hour away. The Geysir Geothermal Area is renowned for its high-temperature geothermal activity. Geysir itself is one of the most famous geysers globally, and has given its name to similar spouting hot springs around the world, hence the term geyser. Geysir is nearly dormant nowadays, but when you visit the original Geysir, you'll be greeted by an 18-meter diameter basin surrounded by thick deposits of geyserite. However, the main attraction now is Stroker, also known as the Churn, located 100 meters south of the Great Geyser. Stroker erupts at regular intervals of approximately 10 minutes, propelling a white column of boiling water as high as 30 meters into the air. The entire area constitutes a geothermal park, resting atop a vast, bubbling cauldron. Here you'll encounter burbling mud pots with unusual colors, hissing steam vents, hot and cold springs, warm streams, and primitive plant life. Continuing with our day's plan, we make our way to the remarkable Gullfoss Waterfall, a mere 10 minutes from Geysir. Gullfoss stands as one of Iceland's most iconic and awe-inspiring natural marvels. With its raw power and stunning beauty, Gullfoss captivates every visitor. As we approach the waterfall, the thunderous roar of cascading water fills the air, evoking a sense of wonder and anticipation. This magnificent waterfall consists of two tiers, where the Vita River plunges into a deep canyon, enveloping the surroundings with massive amounts of mist and spray. The name Gullfoss translates to Golden Falls, and its title is well-deserved. On sunny days, the mist shimmers in the sunlight, casting a mesmerizing golden glow that seems to dance in the air. The sight is nothing short of magical, leaving an indelible impression on all who have the privilege of witnessing it. To truly appreciate Gullfoss, we recommend exploring the designated viewing platforms that offer different vantage points. From the top, you'll witness the immense power of the waterfall as it rushes downward, showcasing nature's awe-inspiring force. As you descend the stairs, you'll get closer to the edge of the falls, feeling the mist on your face and immersing yourself in the grandeur of Gull Falls. As the day draws to a close, we head back to our accommodation, the charming Paradise Cave Hostel. En route, we make a quick stop to admire two other waterfalls, Uridafoss and Egesidafoss. Here are some captured images for you to enjoy. Upon reaching our lodging, we are enchanted by its location nestled within a valley, embraced by a towering verdant cliff adorned with cascading waterfalls. It's the perfect setting to conclude our day's adventures.
Another day dawns on our journey through southern Iceland, a day we'd been eagerly anticipating, and it turned out to be one of the best days of our trip. We set off to visit the renowned Skogafoss Waterfall and embark on the Skogafoss Waterfall Hike, also known as the Skoga Trail or Waterfall Way, which is often overlooked but offers a truly unforgettable experience. But let's start from the beginning. Skogafoss takes its name from the Icelandic words skogur, meaning forest, and foss, meaning falls. According to legend, a Viking settler left a chest of gold hidden behind or beneath the waterfall during the 10th century. The tale goes that a local boy discovered the treasure, managed to grasp one ring from the chest, and witnessed its disappearance shortly after. Today, that ring can be admired at the local Skogar Folk Museum, adding to the allure of this enchanting waterfall. Skogafoss is conveniently located along the southern coast, with a large parking lot just off Route 1, less than 30 minutes from our accommodation. Since the Skogafoss waterfall hike starts right next to the waterfall, we were able to use the same parking area and the best part? Parking is free. Being a highly popular spot, Skogafoss attracts crowds throughout the day. However, if you arrive early, around 8 a.m., you might have the privilege of experiencing it all to yourself. There are two excellent viewpoints to appreciate the grandeur of Skogafoss. The first is by walking to the base of the waterfall using the clearly marked trail from the parking lot. The second viewpoint offers a top-down perspective, and to reach it, you ascend the stairs situated beside the waterfall. At the top, a viewing platform provides a breathtaking vantage point, and from here, the Skogafoss waterfall hike continues along the river inland. While the initial ascent up the stairs to the top of Skogafoss can be a bit challenging, the rest of the hike is relatively straightforward, with a gentle incline and no particularly steep or difficult sections. Although the stairs may be crowded with people solely visiting Skogafoss, as you venture further along the trail, the crowds gradually disperse. During our hike, we were fortunate to have entire sections of the walk to ourselves, which added to the sense of serenity. The Skoga River originates near the glaciers Ijafjallajökull and Myrtlesjökull. As it meanders southward, it cascades over 26 waterfalls, many of which can be admired during this hike. Skogafoss marks the final waterfall before the river reaches the ocean. The Skogafoss waterfall hike begins at the majestic Skogafoss waterfall and follows the Skoga River upstream for approximately 8 kilometers, 5 miles. Along the way, you are treated to a lush green landscape, adorned with several waterfalls, dramatic canyons, and glimpses of glacier-capped volcanoes in the distance. It truly is a beautiful and awe-inspiring walk, likely to become a highlight of any visit to Iceland. Since this is an out-and-back hike, you can choose the distance you wish to cover. Even walking just 30 to 45 minutes upriver from Skogafoss rewards you with breathtaking views and allows you to leave the crowds behind, enjoying a more intimate experience with nature. Before starting the trail, here are a few statistics to consider. The round trip covers a distance of 16 kilometers or 10 miles, with an elevation gain of 500 meters, and the duration typically ranges between 4 to 6 hours. From Skogafoss to the turnaround point at the bridge, the hike gradually ascends. While there are no particularly challenging sections or steep climbs, you'll be aware of the continuous uphill progress. However, this hike is accessible to anyone with average fitness, including children. As you head north from Skogafoss, you are immediately greeted by breathtaking coastal views. During the summer months, the landscape is a vibrant green, almost appearing surreal in its brilliance. The small canyons you encounter in this initial section of the trail serve as a teaser for the grandeur yet to come. If you find this part impressive, be prepared for even more wonders as you continue your journey. Upon reaching the Cascading Falls, you enter the most dramatic section of the Waterfall Way. Prepare to encounter hidden waterfalls, moss-covered canyons, and captivating views of the coastline. As you draw closer to the glaciers Ijaf Yalajokul and Myrtles Yokul, their magnificence becomes more apparent. By this point, many visitors may have turned back, leaving you to savor the natural wonders in greater solitude. The final stretch of the hike, beyond the subtle falls, may be the least exhilarating. However, it is near the end of this section that you'll have the opportunity to witness one of the most remarkable waterfalls on the trail, second only to Skogafoss. 
Sunset Falls, a beautiful double-tiered waterfall nestled within a canyon, awaits your arrival. Located near the bridge, which serves as the turnaround point, it requires hiking almost the entire waterfall way to reach this hidden gem. The bridge over the Skoga River marks the designated turnaround point. The landscape undergoes a noticeable change here, transitioning from lush greenery to a gray, rocky terrain. Not far in the distance, you can catch glimpses of Ijef Yala Jokul and Myrdal's Jokul. Should you decide to continue beyond the bridge, you will proceed along a rough gravel road that traverses a monotonous gray landscape. This stretch represents the most uneventful section of the Fimvordo Halls Trail, and you would need to hike an additional six kilometers one way to witness any change in scenery. In my opinion, it's only worth pursuing if you plan to hike the entire Fimvordo Halls Trail. In our case, we opted not to. To return to Skogafoss, simply retrace your steps along Waterfall Way. Now, with an overall downhill trajectory, it becomes a pleasant and leisurely stroll, affording you repeated views of the captivating waterfalls. In the end, we spent around six hours and a half at Skogafoss. We took our time, pausing frequently to capture countless photos and enjoy our snacks. It was truly a fantastic experience. Upon returning to Paradise Cave Guesthouse, we made a stop at Gamla Fjosid, Old Cow House, a fantastic restaurant not far from Skogafoss. Set within a converted old barn, this cozy establishment sources its dishes from its own farm, notably offering beef hamburgers made from their own cows. It was a culinary delight. And so, another day of our journey came to a close, filled with memorable experiences that continue to accumulate. After a restful night's sleep and a quick energizing breakfast, our day was set to explore some remarkable sights in southern Iceland. Our first stops were the iconic waterfalls Seljalands Foss and Gljufra Bui, conveniently located next to each other. We then continued our journey along Route 1, also known as the National Highway, towards the town of Vik. Along the way, we planned to visit the Dirolai viewpoint, Reynisfjara Black Sand Beach, and on our return from Vik, where we had lunch, we also made a detour to the Solheima Jokul Glacier. It's time to begin. Our first stop was Seljalands Foss, a majestic waterfall known for its elegance. Seljalands Foss is free to visit, but you will have to pay for parking. 700 Icelandic Kronas. Park in the large parking lot and pay your fee at the ticket booth. It's less than a five-minute walk to the waterfall. The sound of cascading water grew louder as I approached, heightening my excitement. Standing at approximately 60 meters, 197 feet, Selja Landsfoss featured a stunning curtain of water that fell from the rugged cliffs above. What made it truly remarkable was the hidden path that allowed me to walk behind the cascades, immersing myself in a surreal world of mist and beauty. While you're at Selja Landsfoss, don't forget to visit the Gliufra Bui waterfall too. This is a neat hidden waterfall that you can reach on a short five-minute walk from Seljalandsfoss. Often called the secret waterfall, it exuded a sense of mystery and exploration. The deafening roar intensified as I approached its secluded location, building up my excitement. Venturing through a narrow opening and carefully navigating the slippery rocks, I was greeted by a breathtaking sight, a magnificent waterfall gracefully plunging into a hidden pool. Nature's grandeur left me in awe, with the misty veil and the sheer power of the cascading water creating a magical atmosphere that transported me to a realm of wonder. We spent under an hour exploring Seljalands Foss and Gliufra Bui simultaneously. After our captivating visit to the waterfalls, we proceeded as planned to explore the enchanting destinations on our itinerary. Our next stop was the Dirholai Viewpoint, a fascinating location renowned for its panoramic vistas. The landscape from Seljalands Foss to the Dirolai viewpoint is a true gift from nature. It is a harmonious blend of powerful and serene elements that come together to create an unforgettable visual experience. It is impossible not to feel small in the face of such grandeur and to appreciate the magnificence of this Icelandic landscape. We are greeted by the imposing presence of the mountains that encircle the landscape. Majestic peaks emerge amidst the clouds, creating a sense of grandeur and mystery. Their rugged and lushly vegetated forms add a touch of serenity to an already breathtaking scenery. 
Upon reaching the Daroli viewpoint, we made our way to the top and were immediately captivated by the awe-inspiring scenery that unfolded before us. The rugged cliffs, proudly standing against the relentless waves of the vast ocean, provided an extraordinary vantage point to take in the breathtaking coastline and the seemingly endless expanse of the Atlantic Ocean. Amidst this picturesque setting, one element stood out, the iconic Diroli Lighthouse. Perched on the edge of the cliff, the lighthouse stood tall and proud, serving as a beacon of light and guidance for ships navigating these treacherous waters. Its red and white structure created a striking contrast against the backdrop of the blue sky and the rugged landscape. From the Durole viewpoint, another beautiful sight that caught our attention was the impressive rock formations known as Rainestranger. Situated near the shore of Rainestfjara Beach, these unique rock pillars rose majestically from the crashing waves. Continuing our journey, we reached Rainestfjara, a captivating black sand beach near the coastal village of Vik. The stark contrast between the dark shore and the crashing waves immediately caught our attention. The relentless surf, shaped by strong Arctic winds, reminded us of the untamed nature of the Icelandic coastline. As we walked along the beach, we marveled at the towering basalt columns that formed majestic cliffs. These hexagonal pillars, created by ancient lava flows, added a sense of grandeur to the already dramatic landscape as if guarding the secrets of the beach. One of Rainus Fiara's most iconic features is Rainus Dranger, impressive sea stacks rising from the restless sea. These rock formations resembled mythical giants frozen in time. According to local folklore, they were once trolls caught by the rising sun and transformed into stone, adding a touch of mystique to the enchanting surroundings. We were also fascinated by the intriguing rock formations scattered along the shore, which showcased unique shapes and textures shaped by natural forces. From caves carved into the cliffs to striking rock formations emerging from the water, Rainus Fiara offered a visual feast. Standing there, taking in the breathtaking panorama, we couldn't help but feel a deep reverence for the untamed beauty of Rainus Fiara. The combination of the black sand, towering cliffs, crashing waves, and the mythical presence of Rainestranger made it a place of unmatched charm and wonder. After our visit to Rainus Fiara, we made our way back to the charming coastal village of Vic. Nestled against a backdrop of dramatic cliffs and surrounded by amazing natural beauty, Vic welcomed us with its small-town charm and warm hospitality. We decided to stop for lunch at a local restaurant that came highly recommended. The aroma of Icelandic cuisine filled the air as we entered, and we were immediately drawn to a dish called Red Hot Lava Soup. Intrigued by the name, we couldn't resist trying it. The soup boasts a fiery blend of flavors, combining tender prime beef, black beans, red wine, onions, tomatoes, bay leaves, red lentils, and a medley of other ingredients. Served in a unique black bread bowl, it's a feast for the senses. To complement the spiciness, we provide a small bowl of Icelandic yogurt on the side, allowing you to temper the heat and savor the flavors to their fullest. This thoughtful touch ensures that every spoonful is a delightful culinary experience without the risk of burning your tongue. With our hunger satisfied and our spirits lifted, thanks to the delicious red-hot lava soup, we bid farewell to Vic, carrying with us the memories of its picturesque coastal beauty and warm hospitality. Our final visit for the day was the majestic Solheimajokul Glacier, a mere 30-minute drive from Vic. Standing in the presence of Solheimajokul, we couldn't help but reflect on the importance of preserving such natural wonders. The glacier serves as a poignant reminder of the impacts of climate change and the need for collective action to protect our planet's fragile ecosystems. As the day drew to a close, we reflected on the incredible sights we had encountered on our journey through the day. Each destination had left an indelible mark, fascinating us with its unique allure and natural splendor. Our exploration of Seljalands Foss, Gliufra Bui, the Diroli Viewpoint, Rainis Fiara Black Sand Beach, and the Solheimajokul Glacier had truly been a feast for the senses, immersing us in the breathtaking beauty of Iceland's southern region.
Tomorrow, the day was set to start early as we had to be in Skaftafell by 10 a.m. for a glacier hike, and the journey would last at least two and a half hours. The day dawned gray and rainy, contrary to the previous days when we experienced that there are sunny days in Iceland too. We left early from Kverna Guesthouse, where they kindly served us breakfast before their usual serving time. However, the journey went faster than expected, and we arrived in Skaftafell in time for a relaxing coffee. Please note that the park has an entrance fee of 750 Icelandic krona. You can conveniently pay with the Parka app. Next, it was time to check in, verify the suitability of our gear, and board the bus that would take us to the base of Foljukal, one of the most magnificent outlet glaciers of the Vatnajökull ice cap. Regarding the equipment, we noticed that most people didn't have proper footwear and had to rent appropriate boots for the excursion. You will also be provided with an ice axe, crampons, harnesses, and a helmet. This equipment ensures your safety during the tour. Please note that the minimum shoe size to attach crampons is European size 35. The bus journey took less than 25 minutes to reach the base. The tour begins with a walk along a winding path that showcases the glacier's ever-changing landscape. Upon reaching the tongue of the glacier, you will be equipped with crampons and led by a knowledgeable guide to explore the awe-inspiring terrain. Lasting 5.5 hours, this hike allowed us to truly immerse ourselves in the beauty of the glacier. We were astonished as we walked on the glacier, climbing high into the icefall and witnessing the mesmerizing formations up close. As we ascended, our guide led the way, ensuring our safety by creating steps in the ice and assessing the path ahead. The constantly changing nature of the glacier, affected by melting ice, required his expertise and constant vigilance. The guides also worked diligently to fill smaller crevasses along our route, ensuring our safety throughout the hike. After about halfway, we took a break to enjoy a snack and replenish our water supplies with fresh water from a stream originating from the glacier. It is important to note that this hike is suited for those who are reasonably fit and sure-footed. During our hike on the Foljuko Glacier, we encountered rain, but it didn't dampen our spirits. It was breathtaking to observe all these formations, especially the crevasses and glacier Mulan. Crevasses are deep cracks or fractures that form in a glacier as it moves. They can be several meters deep and pose hazards due to their unpredictable nature. Mulan, on the other hand, are cylindrical shafts or tunnels formed when meltwater finds its way through cracks or crevasses and erodes the surrounding ice. Our experienced guide allowed us to observe one of these large Mulan in particular. Another amusing aspect of our adventure was the opportunity to learn how to drink water like true Vikings. At the end of the tour, we were tired but happy, though a bit concerned about the decrease and melting of these ice masses due to global warming. After returning to the Arctic Adventures base in Skaftafell and delivering our gear, it was time to hit the road as we had dinner planned in Hopen. Since we had some time, we decided to stop by the guesthouse first to change clothes, as the rain during the glacier hike left us quite damp. Upon arriving at the accommodation, the owner kindly offered to wash and dry all the clothes we had used during the glacier visit, which was a great help. Finally, we embarked on an exploration of Hopen. The town boasts beautiful and vibrant houses that exude picturesque charm. It is renowned for its cultural richness and holds a prominent position within the district of Hornafjordr. Hopen is particularly famous for its seafood, with longestines, a type of lobster, taking center stage. To experience this delicacy, we chose to dine at the Pacus restaurant, conveniently located by the harbor. The menu showcases the use of local ingredients from the Vatnajökull region, including longestines, lamb, salted cod, duck, and pork. We had the opportunity to try the horse tenderloin, a meat that we're not accustomed to, but found it absolutely delicious. Of course, we couldn't miss the chance to savor the oven-grilled langoustine dish. It was a delightful dinner. To conclude the day before returning to our accommodation, we visited the beautiful Stocksons Peninsula. Unfortunately, due to the weather conditions, we were unable to fully appreciate the beauty of the landscape. Nevertheless, Stocksons is renowned for its black sand dunes, dramatic mountains, and picturesque lighthouse. And so, we arrived on the last day of our journey, a day that would take us back to Reykjavik and later to Keflavik, where we had a scheduled return flight in the early hours of the following day. As we woke up, our hopes for a sunny day were dashed by the prevailing grey sky. 
However, with the extended daylight hours during this time of year, we still had ample time to explore several iconic and breathtaking sites in southern Iceland. Our plan for the day was as follows. We set out towards Jokul Sarlon Glacier Lagoon, located about 80 kilometers from Hofen, where we were staying. Our intention was to stroll along the mesmerizing Breidamer Kursandur, which you may not know by name, but it's famously known as the Diamond Beach. Following that, we embarked on the amphibian boat tour on Jokul Sarlon Lagoon, a reservation we had made online in advance. Continuing our journey on Route 1 towards Reykjavik, we were eager to visit the Fjadragaljufur Canyon, despite Google indicating that it was temporarily closed. Given its proximity to Route 1, we decided to check if it was indeed closed, and to our surprise, it was open. This place is simply unmissable. In under three and a half hours, we would reach Reykjavik, signifying the end of our adventure through South Iceland. But before we bid farewell, let's showcase the images we captured of these locations. Breedemurker Sandur, also known as Diamond Beach, is an amazing destination that must be seen to be believed. Located adjacent to Jokul Sarlon Glacier Lagoon, this beach showcases a striking contrast between the glistening icebergs that have drifted from the Breidemerkur Jokul Outlet Glacier and the contrasting black sands. The icebergs, with colors ranging from deep blue to brilliant white and turquoise, create a surreal spectacle. It's a truly unique experience that sparks the imagination. When searching on Google, you'll find two parking lots for Diamond Beach, one on each side of the outlet of Jokul Sarlon Glacier Lagoon. We recommend choosing the west side, labeled as Breidemerk Sandur, on Google Maps. Parking is free, and the lot is conveniently located right next to the beach. We then embarked on an interesting amphibian boat tour of Jokul Sarlon Lagoon. After picking up the guests from a designated location, this enchanting excursion allowed us to capture the essence of this remarkable place through our camera lens, despite the rain accompanying us throughout the tour. Our knowledgeable guides, fluent in English, shared fascinating insights into the history and facts surrounding Jokul Sarlon. As we gracefully navigated through the glistening icebergs, we even had delightful encounters with playful seals along the way. This 30 to 40 minute tour provided an unforgettable opportunity to create enduring memories of Jokul Sarlon Lagoon's astonishing allure. Finally, the long-awaited Fjadragaljufur Canyon. Hidden within the mesmerizing landscapes of southern Iceland, this canyon unveils its extraordinary beauty. With its unique serpent-like shape, Fjadragaljufur stands as one of Iceland's most spectacular natural wonders. The canyon is 100 meters deep and 2 kilometers long, characterized by sheer turning and twisting walls adorned with soft grass, moss patches, and intriguing salience. A lazy river meanders through the depths of the canyon, creating a dreamlike sight that words can hardly describe. Standing above this distinctive canyon and admiring its unusual landscape is an unparalleled experience for sure. Back in Reykjavik, I took the opportunity to show my son the city's most iconic locations and savor the delicious lobster soup one last time on this trip. When it comes to fresh seafood in Reykjavik, look no further than Seagrafin. Owned by the famous Sea Baron, a retired Icelandic fisherman and Coast Guard chef, this charming old line seafood restaurant is located in a green painted fisherman's hut by the harbor. And it's time to conclude this video, which turned out to be not as concise as we expected, but we couldn't resist including the fabulous images we captured on this equally fabulous and unforgettable journey through southern Iceland. We would like to thank you for your interest in the travel documentaries we create, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next videos where we will delve into specific details of the trip. Take care and have happy travels.